The idea of making things at home, saving the trip to a store, money and time, plus that I can get exactly the result I have in mind, the size and material I want is invaluable. Ever felt like you are just one step away from unlocking your creative potential, but missing the right tool to get you there? A laser engraver is a great add-on to a 3D printing enthusiast workshop. Whether it is for decoration, practical use or as a gift for someone else, it feels so much better if you make these on your own instead of buying something that doesn't look exactly how you want. The gifted ones will surely appreciate that you put some thought and work into it. What about engraving colorful images on canvas, creating puzzles like this, making cute keychains or engraving on glass? It's about half a year since I got the Gravity Falcon 2 and if you watched my review of it, you know that I had some safety concerns working with an open laser. Besides that, I had a lot of fun and still have using it. Around February, Gravity launched their new Pro flagship series of the Falcon 2 with a 22W and a 40W model. Recently, they also launched a powerful 60W model. The question is, is it really a pro laser or are they just trying to sell you the same thing with a few new gadgets? I'll check that in this video with the Creality Falcon 22W Pro which has been provided to me for review by Creality. Nevertheless, you get my honest opinion of the machine in this review, including any problems I stumble upon, how easy is it to use and how safe is it compared to its predecessor and which features I'm still missing and wish they had added to the Pro 2. I will share a lot of tips throughout the video for using the machine, the software and showcase things you can create too. Make sure you watch till the end to not miss any of them. Enough said, let's right dive in and see what you get for the bucks. The engraver comes in a huge heavy box. The assembly is a little bit more complicated than with the Falcon 2, but following the grade manual it shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. Just mount the bar with the camera to the side profiles. Slide in the red protection sheet until it sits in the slot of the camera bar profile. Then fix the sloppy sheet using the smaller bar. Next continue with the sliding cover and mount the light bar to the profiles. Pull the foil from the acrylic side covers, position them on the sides of the frame and fix them with the small screws. Put the top cover onto the base and fix it with the remaining screws. To fit the exhaust air hose, press the mounting clip together and slide it over the hose. Then, while continuing to squeeze the clamp, push the hose onto the connector and release the clamp to fix it in position. The other end of the hose should go outside of the window. That way, dust and probably unhealthy smoke won't pollute your workspace. To complete the installation of the cover, plug in the light bar to the base and the fan connector to the light bar. Mounting the laser head and connecting the air assist is as simple as with the predecessor. Slide in the laser module, fasten it with the screws, plug in the air assist tube and plug in the connector of the laser module into the control board. Arrange the tube and cable and, if necessary, use the velcro strips to tie them together. For most laser engravers, you have to buy a honeycomb grid separately, but not for the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. I wouldn't call their solution a honeycomb grid, but it's ingenious. You get a bunch of flat, tip-shaped bars, which are placed in the slots on the left and right of the frame. To cover the complete area, leave out every second slot. What's so cool about this solution is, that you can rearrange the bars to get a denser, more supporting grid, for example for smaller parts. Second, it makes it so easy to clean them from dust and burn marks. If you ever try to clean a honeycomb, you know what I'm talking about. Though nothing good without something to complain. The bars have some play in the gaps. Normally that's not a problem, but it could ruin a multipass job when they move slightly between passes. To get rid of the sloppiness of the bars, wind some tape around their ends. Two to three turns should do the trick. In the small box you find an SD card reader with an SD card containing documentation, sample files and a choice of software. To operate the laser engraver you can choose from installing the free laser GRBL or Lightburn, which you can try for 30 days before purchasing a lifetime license. I go with Lightburn, it's easier to use and has some nice features. Most can be done with laser GRBL too, but it often is more complicated or requires more steps to achieve the same. 
After installation of the software, I import the provided preferences for the Creality Falcon 2 Pro and make some adjustments to the settings. The first thing I check and change is the measure for the speed. For diode lasers, speeds are most times given in millimeters per minute instead of millimeters per second. Therefore I change that to millimeters per minute. To get a better control for positioning, I also change the shape movement increments to smaller values. In the device settings I enable continuous framing and enable laser on when framing. Choose a value below 3% so that you can barely see the laser dot when checking the frame for engraving. After connecting the Falcon and the camera with the supplied USB cables and adapters, turn it on, choose the port from the connection drop-down and select the Creality Falcon 2 camera in the camera tab. Before starting to engrave or cut, let's take a look at the safety and features of the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. The most obvious change is that the Creality Falcon 2 Pro comes fully enclosed. While the laser head still is Laser Class 4, adding the enclosure leverages the machine's safety from Laser Class 4 to Laser Class 1. This means you can safely operate it without worrying about laser light straying out, potentially injuring your eyes. Therefore, there's no need to wear protective glasses while being next to the Falcon 2 Pro when it's at work, although it doesn't hurt if you do. It uses two sensors to detect the sealing status of the lid and immediately turns off the laser when the lid is opened. Despite that, almost any material, when engraved or cut, produces a lot of very fine, almost always more or less toxic particles. During the test I found out that the case is not smoke or dust sealed. To see how much the air quality in the room changes when using the laser engraver, I modified an IKEA Windricting air quality sensor to get some data. But because of that, wearing a respirator protection mask when working next to a laser engraver is a good habit. Besides that, it has all the safety and monitoring features already known from the Falcon 2. The laser module has three indicator lights to show the status of the airflow monitor, the fire indicator and finally the lens contamination monitor. The fire indicator, when activated, will not only stop the laser when it detects a flame, but it will also move the head away to prevent it from further damage. I already loved that when I did the fire test in the other review. With activated air assist monitoring, the machine will give an alarm or even stop when the airflow is blocked. Last but not least, this machine actually tells you when the lens is dirty and requires cleaning. That is for sure one of the coolest and most useful features I have ever seen on a desktop laser engraving machine. As far as I know, no other company has these features built in. If you know one, leave it in the comments, please. You can control the behavior of the laser module on the alarms by setting the machine parameters $153 low airflow alarm, $145 flame alarm and $155 lens contamination alarm to zero for off or one for on. When set to zero, the intelligent laser module will still indicate the alarm condition but continue working. In my opinion, airflow isn't that critical. I leave that turned off by sending $154 equals zero on the console but activate the others by sending $153 equals one and $155 equals one because these can prevent damage to the laser head and lens. The Creality Falcon 2 Pro has a very bright LED bar that lights up the enclosure area very well, giving a good view of the work pane to see what's happening inside the laser engraver with the lid closed. The light bar has two toggle switches on the left and right to control the behavior of the exhaust fan and light. When in the auto position, the laser engraver controls when the fan and light are switched on and off. To have the fan or light running continuously, switch them into the on position. Especially for the fan, that's great when you engrave something that causes a lot of dust and smoke, making sure that all gets exhausted before you open the cover. There's another reason for the light bar. By far one of the features I'm excited about most is the built-in camera. Oh man, what did I hate repositioning the objects to engrave by repeating the framing over and over. Even when I got it, the result was never as good as I wanted. Using the camera positioning becomes that easy. Before you can use it, you have to do a one-time calibration of the camera lens and alignment. From the laser tools menu, choose Calibrate Camera Lens. Select the Falcon 2 Pro camera. Next, select the lens type. At first sight, I thought the lens is a fish eye but couldn't get any good results with that option. Therefore, make sure that the standard lens is chosen. 
click Next and then the blue link to download the calibration pattern, print it, glue it onto a piece of cardboard and cut it in the size of DIN A6 or 4x6 card. Now place the calibration pattern in the center of the workspace as shown in the image and click on Capture. You should see the captured image and a message below the capture button telling you if the pattern has been detected good enough. The value should be below 1. The closer to 0, the better. If it doesn't work, try to get more light. Sometimes just clicking capture again resolves the issue too. When the detection is good, click next and repeat the steps until the calibration is finished. The last dialog offers to continue with the camera alignment calibration. Place a sheet of A4 or letter sized paper in the center of the workspace. Check the settings for engraving the text and pattern and ensure the scale value is 100%. I set the thickness to 0.1, the power to 60%, the speed to 3000 and 6000 mm for the line speed. Adjust the laser head to engrave 1 to 3 mm using the focus tool. Before clicking on start, click the frame button to see if the paper position is correct, then start. Click next to get an image of the cutouts. Zoom in on the first cutout and place the cursor in the center of the cutout. A double click will mark the position with a red crosshair. Continue with the second, third and fourth cutouts. A click on finish completes this calibration step. Now, when you want to check if a workpiece in the laser engraver is aligned with your Lightburn project, click the Update Overlay button in the Camera tab to get an image of the real build area inside the work pane. That way you can immediately see if it matches and reposition your project using the cursor keys in combination with Ctrl or Shift to match up with the cut or engraving you want to do. After setting up the Falcon 2 Pro, let me showcase you some ideas to create with. Images engraved on painting canvas look very impressive, therefore I couldn't resist trying that on my own and share how to do it with you. I did my first try with this line picture I bought on Etsy. I went with white, gold and black for the colors which I sprayed evenly onto the canvas. Two layers of white, each done in crosshatch to achieve a good coverage. I repeated that with two layers gold and finally three layers of black. Then I imported the image into Lightburn and set the engraving parameters. At that time I didn't know how to choose the right settings and the result was not as I hoped. I tried again with an image of my cat. This time I set the power more carefully. After not being satisfied with the result after the first pass, I did some more with power reduced to get finer details. That's already looking great, but can I even do better? Here's another try done with six color layers with an image from my other cat. Before engraving the image, I engraved some test patterns on another canvas which I prepared the same way. That way I could choose the right engraving parameters for each layer. Not too bad for the first try. Next I'll show methods to engrave on glass. With a CO2 laser it's no problem because for the wavelength it uses, glass is opaque, causing the beam to generate hot spots where it cracks microparticles out of the surface, causing the milky look. The blue 455 nanometer diode laser light goes right through the transparent glass, not being blocked and nothing happens. I tried two ways to get the laser dot to heat the surface of the glass to mimic the effect of a CO2 laser. I spray painted half of the glass black and put a piece of black cardboard beneath the other half. Then I did a material test on both halves to find out which one gave the better results. To complete the test I turned the glass so that the painted side was on the underside and did the material test on that too. Looking at the results Having the painted side on top is the worst, followed by having black cardboard below the glass. The best results were achieved by having the painted side on the underside. For this DC Heroes engraving I left the black color on the back of the glass to get some contrast. You can also use a white backdrop, so you have even more contrast to see the image. And if you want to take it a step further, print out the image in color and use that as backdrop. The stripes are a result of the honeycomb bar, which I should have removed before starting the engraving. An interesting effect can be achieved using a diode laser on stainless steel. With different laser power, annealing colors are created on the stainless steel. To try this out, I ordered a bunch of stainless steel keychain plates, which are a nice and cheap giveaway or gift for friends too. 
doing some test engravings is recommended to find out which settings give the best results and save wasting material. My test shows colors varying from black over grey to shades of blue, pink, yellow, brown and even a sort of green. I then use the values from the test to set the engraving parameters to engrave a portrait. It works best when choosing one of the dithering methods provided. For the final I choose to cut steel. Well, I tried with 0.8mm stainless steel and there's almost no way doing that reliable with a 22W diet laser. What works is using a 10 times thinner steel metal foil. Here's the result from the material test and there are some settings which work for cutting. What's left to make the Credity Falcon 2 Pro the perfect laser engraver? In my opinion, there are two features that would make it stand out amongst the competitors. Maybe not the most important and probably not there because of security reasons, wireless control and camera monitoring. That would remove the requirement to put your laptop next to the machine in your maybe dirty workshop, then one could supervise the machine from another room. Most wanted by me, autofocus of the laser head to precisely control the focus of the laser beam, removing the coarse guesswork done with a focus tool and fiddling with the lock screws. Additionally, it could be used creatively by changing the focus during engraving to achieve some effects otherwise not possible. To learn more about the features the Pro and the non-Pro Falcon share, watch my Credity Falcon 2 review and get some more ideas. If you like my content, please subscribe and like. See you next time here on 3D Printing Geek.